Throughout the Tudor period, and in particular the reign of King Henry VIII, many people lost their lives on the execution scaffolds across England. Many of these people were priests and bishops, and people who lived very holy lives devoted to their faith, but ultimately they could not accept the changes that the notorious king made to religion. One of those was Bishop John Fisher, who today is known as a saint, and he refused to accept the king as the supreme head of the Church of England. Because of this defiance, Henry VIII saw him as a troublemaker, and because of this, he was taken, on the 22nd of June 1535, at the age of 65, to Tower Hill, where his head was taken clean off by an executioner. He was a man described by Erasmus as one man at this time who was incomparable for uprightness of life, for learning and for greatness of soul. But what is the story of his execution? Join us today as we look at this and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. John Fisher studied at Cambridge University and whilst here he attracted a degree of attention and was considered a man who would go far in the church. He would then become a vicar and he was appointed as a confessor and priest to Margaret Beaufort, the mother of King Henry the Seventh. He continued to rise throughout educational spheres in the Tudor period, but then on the 14th of October 1504, John Fisher was made a bishop, and specifically the Bishop of Rochester, after Henry the Seventh insisted to the Vatican that this must happen. Rochester was a poor diocese, and Fisher was sent there and was a passionate priest who was well liked. He had a brilliant reputation, and he preached a funeral oration for Henry the Seventh and Lady Margaret who both died in 1509. He also mixed with other critical thinkers including Erasmus, and he became very famous across the country for his skill. But despite this he came into conflict with King Henry VIII. He continued to defend the church against Protestantism and the ideas of Martin Luther, and he would then also defend Henry VIII's first wife. At the time the King's eye was captured by Anne Boleyn, who had become his second wife, and he was trying to annul his marriage to Catherine of Aragon. Fisher then became one of Queen Catherine's biggest supporters, and he appeared on her behalf at court appearances, and he openly criticised the king which was very dangerous. The king learned of this, and he was furious and Henry would never forgive him. The king then began to attack the Catholic Church to force through his annulment, and with this Fisher warned Parliament that the Catholic Church in England would be destroyed. Many complained to the king about Fisher's statements in Parliament, and he was summoned to Henry to explain himself. But as the king continued his assault on the church, Fisher appealed to Rome to help. It was around this time when Fisher's household was struck by a poisoning plot, as his cook had placed something in the porridge, which was eaten by many of his household. Two people died in this, but Fisher was fasting and avoided possible death, but some alluded to the fact that the king was behind the poisoning plot, and that he wanted to deal with Fisher once and for all. This resulted in Fisher's cook Richard Roos, being bored alive in front of a crowd. Fisher, it's believed, did embark in secret conversations to overthrow Henry VIII, and he would talk with foreign diplomats about this, and he encouraged the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V to try and invade England, and to depose the Tudor king. But things got worse. Following the king's great matter, with the king wanting to divorce Catherine, Sir Thomas More, Fisher's friend, resigned as Chancellor. Henry would marry Anne Boleyn in secret, and Fisher was then arrested. It's believed that this happened as they were worried about him opposing and speaking out about the coronation of Anne Boleyn. He was released and no charges were brought against him, but the net was closing in for Bishop John Fisher. A bill of attainder was passed against him for being involved in the Nun of Kent case, in which Elizabeth Barton predicted the death of the king. He was pardoned and was later forced to pay a fine of £300. But there were attempts to get John Fisher to sign the act of succession, recognising Henry VIII as the supreme head of the Church of England, and also to accept Anne Boleyn as the rightful queen. Fisher refused to accept this and was imprisoned inside the Tower of London on the 26th of April 1534. There were many attempts made to get him to submit to the will of the king, and because he refused he was indicted on treason charges. He was held at the Tower of London for a year and was allowed food and drink sent by friends but was refused a priest. He was held in very tough conditions, but Fisher believed that the king could not be the supreme head of the Church of England. But he fell into a trap set for him by Richard Rich, as he had been sent to gather evidence against Fisher. Fisher repeated his true opinion, and this would be used as evidence. But then to try and save John Fisher, Pope Paul III offered to make Fisher a cardinal, 
hoping that Henry would not execute him. But Henry said that if the Cardinal's hat ever came to England, he would send Fisher's head in return to the Vatican. But a special commission for Fisher's trial was issued, and this took place at Westminster Hall in front of his enemies, including Thomas Cromwell and even Anne Boleyn's father. Fisher had been charged with treason, and he had been stripped of his position as bishop, and he was treated like a commoner and was tried by jury. He was found guilty of treason and was condemned to be hanged, drawn and quartered at Tyburn. But the Londoners were furious, and they compared Fisher's life to John the Baptist, who was executed in similar circumstances. The king then commuted Fisher's death sentence to beheading, and he was taken to Tower Hill on the 22nd of June, 1535. He was taken from his cell in the Tower of London, and was flanked by a number of guards who accompanied him on his short journey to Tower Hill. He walked amongst the crowds, and as he arrived at Tower Hill, he was helped up the steps of the scaffold. He was meeting his death with dignity and calmness, and before the execution he made a short speech. He said, I thank God, hitherto my stomach hath served me very well, thereunto, so that yet I have not feared death. Wherefore I desire you all to help and assist me with your prayers, that at the very point and instant of death's stroke, I may in that very moment stand steadfast, without fainting in any one point of the Catholic faith, free from any fear. He impressed many of those who were there to witness his execution, and it was said of the moment the axe fell. When they reached the scaffold, the rough men of his escort offered to help him up the ladder, but he smiled at them, Nay, you shall see me go up to my death well enough myself, without help and forthwith he began to climb, almost nimbly. As he reached the top, the sun appeared from behind the clouds, and its light shone upon his face. He was heard to murmur some words from Psalm 33. The masked headsman knelt to ask his pardon, and again the cardinal's manliness dictated every word of his answer. I forgive thee with all my heart, and I trust on our Lord thou, shall see me die even lustily. Then they stripped him, and a gasp of pity went up at the sight of his body, nothing but skin and bones, the flesh clean wasted away, and a very image of death. He was offered a final chance to save his life by acknowledging the royal supremacy, but turned to the crowd and spoke these words, Christian people, I have come hither to die for the faith of Christ's Catholic Church, and I thank God hitherto my courage hath served me well. I pray God save the king and the realm, and send the king a good counsel. The courage of his spirit triumphing over the obvious weakness of his body amazed them all, and a murmur of admiration was still rustling from the crowd, when they saw him go down on his knees and begin to pray. Then he put his wasted neck upon the low block. The executioner then struck with the axe, and Fisher's head was taken clean off. His head was taken to London Bridge, and it was then dipped in tar, and was placed on a pike above the bridge. But his body was then stripped and was left on the scaffold for hours, as an act of disgrace, until he was then buried in a rough grave but his body was then moved inside the chapel within the walls of the Tower of London. His head, it was said, looked lifelike, and it disturbed those who passed underneath it, and it was then replaced by Sir Thomas More's head. Bishop John Fisher was a man who dared to cross the King of England, Henry VIII, and he stuck true to his beliefs and ideas until the very end. This would lead to him going to his death on Tower Hill, and the crowd was shocked that day, as a very peaceful man was treated brutally in his final seconds. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.